Hey guys, today I'm going to be explaining how to install PS Freedom on your jailbroken iPhone on the 3.1.2 software. You have to have 3.1.2 jailbroken with Black Rain or else this won't work. So if you're not jailbroken on 3.1.2 with Black Rain, I've got a tutorial in the description that's going to show you how to downgrade and go ahead and get jailbroken with uh, Black Rain. So if you want to go ahead and check and make sure that you're on 3.1.2, we're going to go ahead and go to settings and then general about and if you look right here it's going to say version 3.1.2 and that's how you know you're good so we're going to go ahead and close out of there the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install open ssh and we're going to use this later on we want to go ahead and get it now though i'm going to go ahead and ignore these upgrades i really don't feel like doing them right now and then what we're going to go ahead and do is search and we want to go ahead and search for open ssh all one word and this thing's really lagging behind here we'll give it a second all right and then once you've typed that in you're going to notice that you see open ssh right there on the screen uh you go ahead and tap it it's going to bring up the install page. Now up here it would say install, but since I've already installed it, it just says modify for me. So what you would usually do is just go ahead and click on install and go ahead and let it install you. After that, it's going to want you to respring the device. Go ahead and do it. Once your device is respringed and you're back at your main screen, you want to go ahead and get your iPod's uh, IP address just so you can have it in the future because we are going to be connecting to it from your PC. So what we'll do here is go ahead and bring up settings again. And this time we're going to go ahead and go to Wi-Fi. And then there's going to be a little blue arrow next to the uh, Wi-Fi access point that you're connected to. Go ahead and give that a tap. And it's going to show your IP address right here. So go ahead and take that down for future reference. All right, now we're done with the iPod here for just a couple of minutes. We're going to go ahead and get VMware opened. And this is what you're going to be running uh, Ubuntu in. And this is where the majority of the work is going to go on. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Ubuntu. If you haven't installed it yet, you'll just go ahead and click here, create a new virtual machine, and pick the ISO that you downloaded. It's pretty straightforward. And it's going to go ahead and load up now. And it will take a couple of minutes to load. All right, once it loads up, we're going to go ahead and log in. You'll go ahead and just use the uh, credentials that you set up when you uh, set up your virtual machine there in VMware. All right, here we go. All right, now that everything's loaded up and ready to go, we want to go ahead and get the Open iBoot uh, application here that we did get downloaded. We're going to go ahead and just click it and drag it right onto your Ubuntu desktop. It's going to be right there. It's a zip file. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and go ahead and extract it. And now you're going to see the open iBoot folder here on the desktop of the Ubuntu machine. We're going to go ahead and bring up Places Home Folder. And then just go ahead and drag the open iBoot folder right into your home folder. Once you have that open iBoot uh, folder dragged in, we're going to go ahead and open it up. Just double click on it here. Uh, see these two files, the load IBEC and the um, OIBC. We're going to go and right click on each of these and go to properties. We're going to click on permissions and uh, you want to go ahead and change these to read and write and also allow executing file as program and we'll go ahead and close. And we're going to go ahead and do this for this file as well, the OIBC one. Read and write, read and write and allow executing files and close. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. We'll just go ahead and close this window out. And now we're going to go ahead and bring up Applications, Accessories, Terminal. This is going to go ahead and bring up our command prompt. But we're going to go ahead and type in, in this command prompt. And I'm going to put the commands down low um, in the underbar so you guys can check them out and type them in, copy and paste if you like. We're going to go ahead and do CD. Slash open iBoot. 
And that's gonna go ahead and just put us in the open iBoot folder that we just changed those permissions in. Now the next thing that we have to do here is go ahead and get super user permissions. So we're gonna go ahead and do sudo, S-U-D-O space S-U, and then go ahead and press enter. It's gonna go ahead and ask you for your password. This will be the same one that you logged in with. And it probably won't show up there when you type it, but just go ahead and type it in and press enter anyway. And then you'll know that you got it when it says root at Ubuntu there, and then it's gonna have the path that we're in. Now the next thing that we wanna go ahead and do is get our iPod touch in recovery mode. And how you do this is uh, you just go ahead and turn the device off like normal. And then once you have the device off, you're gonna go ahead and hold and uh, press and hold the power button and the home button at the same time for 10 seconds. And then as soon as you see the Apple logo show up, go ahead and let go of the power button and just hold down the home button for a few more seconds. And you'll see it'll tell you to plug into iTunes. That's how you know that you're in uh, recovery mode. Make sure you have it plugged into the computer at this point. Now that we've got our uh, iPod Touch connected and in restore mode, we're gonna get a message here. If we go to virtual machine, removable devices, and then you're gonna see Apple USB device. You wanna make sure that it says disconnect, connect to host, because that means that it's actually connected to our uh, VMware client right now. So if it were to say uh, connect, disconnect from host, you wanna go ahead and click that and that'll make sure that it's actually connected to Ubuntu and not just your Windows installation. So once we've got that done, we're gonna be able to go ahead and, and type in dot slash load IBEC space open iboot dot img3 and I'm gonna have that typed up in the description and you're gonna go ahead and press enter once you get that typed in and then on your iPhone screen you're actually going to see the open iboot come up and once that's up on your iPod you'll probably want to go ahead and get this command typed in because you have to do this really quickly after the next step so it's best just to do it uh, beforehand so go ahead and type in period slash oibc and don't press enter yet. Now here's the next part. On your iPod, you're gonna go ahead and press your power button one time until it says console is highlighted. And then once you have console highlighted, you're gonna go ahead and press the home button and it's gonna go ahead and boot into the console. As soon as you see it boot into the console, press enter on your keyboard and that's gonna make sure that it gets that command entered. You'll know that you entered that command correctly because it's gonna start showing everything that's on your iPod screen in this terminal window, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do it. Now once you do that, you're gonna see uh, all these commands running across your terminal window. Don't worry about it, just let it finish. At the end, it's gonna go ahead and say, welcome to iBoot down at the bottom. This is where you go ahead and in the terminal window, go ahead and type install, I-N-S-T-A-L-L, -L, and then press enter. You're gonna see this install, it might take a couple of minutes. And what this is actually doing right now, it's installing Open iBoot on your iPod. Okay, it has finished installing now. It will, uh, you'll know that because it'll say done with installation. And once you do this, you can go ahead and close out Ubuntu. We're completely finished with it. So just go ahead and close it out. Back to good old Windows 7. And then what we'll go ahead and do here is once you've closed that out, your iPod is still gonna be in the command prompt. So just press and hold your uh, home and power button at the same time and it's gonna go ahead and restart your iPod. And then also just go ahead and make sure you unplug it from your computer. We're not gonna need it plugged in any longer. Now once you turn your iPod on, you're gonna notice that you see the open iBoot window come up. Um, we'll go ahead and just select iPhone OS. So it's already selected, so all you have to do is just press the home button and it's gonna boot into your iPod like it normally would. Okay, now once your iPod boots back up, we're gonna go ahead and slide to unlock. And why don't we go ahead and get our IP address if you didn't already. So what we'll go ahead and do here is go to settings. We're going to go ahead and bring up general. Actually, I lied. We're going to go ahead and go to Wi-Fi. And then we'll go ahead and click the little blue arrow next to the one that you're connected to, and it's going to show your IP address right there. All right, once you've got your iPod's IP address, why don't we go ahead and extract the files that we're going to be loading onto it. So we're going to go ahead and open up WinRAR here. The only one that we need is this one that says IPT1G, which is iPod Touch first generation. So we'll just go ahead and extract that file right out to the desktop. All right, once you have those files right there on your desktop, we're gonna go ahead and open up WinSCP, and we're gonna go ahead and connect up to your uh, iPod now. So host name is gonna be that IP address right there. So in my case, it's gonna be 192.168. 
and then the username is going to be root R O T. Password is going to be Alpine A L P I N E, and I'll put all this down in the description for you guys. Now the file protocol that we want to connect under, go ahead and change that to just S C P instead of S F T P, and then we're going to go ahead and click on login. It's going to sit here. And it's going to say connecting to host. And you may get an error, but the point is that it's going to go ahead and bring it up. Okay, and once we're in WinSCP, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're in private slash VAR. And once you're there, you want to go ahead and take uh, this folder, go ahead and open it up. And then in that folder, you're going to see your Android, the IMG, and then your ZL image file. Go ahead and drag both of those over into your WinSCP window here. And it might take them just a couple of seconds to transfer over. Once you do that, you can go ahead and close out that window. You're done. You're going to see them here down at the bottom now. The, what you want to go ahead and do here is right click properties and that's going to be on the android.img and let's see here you want to make sure that it's actually modded to 777 and then you're going to press ok and then the same thing for the z image file so we're going to go ahead and make sure that the permissions are set to 777 and then we're going to go ahead and click on ok so once you do that you're actually finished with WinSCP so we'll go ahead and close it out and yes, we want to go ahead and terminate our session. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and turn off our iPod. So go ahead and press and hold your power button. And it's going to ask you if you want to slide the power off. Go ahead and do that. And then your iPod is going to turn off. And once your iPod turns off, we're going to go ahead and go over to your PS3 now. So make sure you bring your, your uh, sync cable as well as your iPod. And we're going to go ahead and start up the hack. So we're almost finished. Okay, so we're at the PS3 now. Go ahead and turn off the power in the back. That way the red light turns out. And what we're going to go ahead and do here is unplug anything USB from the PS3. So just go ahead and unplug that controller. We don't need that right now. We're going to go ahead and plug in the iPod. Go ahead and plug it in USB. Go ahead and plug it into the bottom here. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is turn it on so press your power button and hold it for just a second and then you're gonna see open iBoot come up you're gonna go ahead and press your power button two times and you're gonna notice this, that it goes down there to Android now go ahead and press your home button and you're gonna see it start to load up at this time go ahead and turn your power button on and then go ahead and watch the screen see the penguin now you're gonna go ahead and press power and eject very quickly and then we're gonna go ahead and watch the screen if it takes a long time to boot up, you know you got it right. And your iPod is going to go ahead and do a whole bunch of commands and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. You don't have to worry about any of that. Alright, and that is a good sign. So it looks like we're booted up. We'll go ahead and grab our controller. And we'll go ahead and sign in. If your PlayStation just sits there for a long time and it doesn't boot up and it just sits at a black screen, don't worry. Just go ahead and turn the power off for the PlayStation, press and hold the power and hold button on the uh, iPod, and just go ahead and do that process over. It's probably just because you waited too long to press your power and an eject button after you saw the penguin on the screen. So what we'll go ahead and do now is uh, we'll go ahead and go over to Game, and you will notice that it says Install Package Files, and it has the App Home PS3 Game directory there. So uh, this is homebrew that I've already installed. We've got the backup manager and the PS3 FTP server. Uh, you'll go ahead and install those off of like any USB flash drive. You can get those off like the PS3 hacks website under the download section. But that is it. So I definitely want to keep you guys updated on new homebrew that comes out. I'll be making more tutorials for you guys. So just make sure you hit that subscribe button up there, somewhere up there. And uh, peace out, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it worked for you. If not, read the description. There's a lot more information in there that can help.